Friday night, uh, Helix lost a Division I AA championship game to an undefeated Folsom team at Sacramento State University. Saturday night, three more San Diego section teams are playing for a state championship. Now, two of those in the desert and one more here in San Diego. Believe it or not, KSI Sending Cruz everywhere. We start with the one locally, Steel Canyon, welcoming Half Moon Bay from San Francisco. The Steel Canyon Stadium, not big enough for this one, so they move it to Southwestern College. The Cougars remembering former Granite Hill star Will Burton as they take his jersey out to midfield for the coin toss before the Division 3A championship with Half Moon Bay, which is just west of San Mateo, if you're wondering. You can see the decals there. Steel Canyon also putting Burton's number 19 on their helmets. The uh, Cougars get out to an early lead. Kenneth Watson gets some nice blocking. Up front, steals in front seven to nothing. And then it's the defense that comes up big. Look at Darren Walton forcing the bad pitch on the ground. San Diego State bound. Michael Oliver scoop and score. 14 nothing at, at this point. Fantastic play of the game comes from David Lipscomb. And follow the bouncing ball off of the hands, off of the helmet, and into the hands of Mr. Lipscomb as the Cougars go, go down uh, in the half, 15 to 14, second half, and this one gets wild. Thomas Fishburne with the run, and he sails to Nathaniel Gord, who takes it the rest of the way for a touchdown. Then it's Marvin James picking off the uh, NorCal Cougars twice in the third quarter, and both interceptions would lead to touchdowns, including this 20-yarder by Watson, his second of the game. It's 34-15, but this is still a game, folks. Half Moon Bay won't go away. Chase Hoffman would fumble on the goal line. His teammate Juan Jose Vasquez grabs it in the end zone. Steel Cannon only up by two. And after Deontay McKinney touchdown for Steel, Gavin Tomberlin would roll to his left and find Hayden Van Allman in the corner of the end zone. And it's 44-42. Steel Cannon hanging on a two-point lead. Half Moon Bay needing the onside kick, but it doesn't travel far enough as Steel Canyon. And Scott Longerbunk, congratulations, coach. Winning their first, uh, after winning the first second championship, they win their first state championship, the final, 44 to 42. I woke up this morning knowing we were about to be state champions. And you know, that's just what this team has been through uh, all season long, you know. Nobody believed in us, but we believed and we went in that locker room and when we were on the field that we were brothers for life and you know, had to come out here and get the win. I think it's a long time coming. Steel Kane's been working for this. We've been working for this. We ran that championship hill. We're not gonna call it state champion hill because we just did this and we did it for the brothers. We did it for Will Burton and we did it as a unit. It's one of those things as a coach, you know, I've. I dreamed of coaching in a CIF championship. I never dreamed of coaching. The state championship game wasn't around when I started first started coaching, so it was never even in the realm of possibility for me. So the first thing I did today in our last meeting was to thank them because they put me in an opportunity to be beyond my dreams. You know, this, th these last two games have been beyond anything I ever dreamed of getting the chance to coach in. One of my favorite sayings from Coach Longboard, eight no quit in a Cougar. In the Division 4A final, the Pethas facing Southwest El Central, Kevin Bear and when Matt Gilson making the trip. First quarter, Cam Jungers tosses to Tyler Sikon for the 69-yard touchdown. Makes it 7-0 Eagles. The Trojans strike back with the Bracey family, Tyree to Tariq. And Milpitas is up 24-14 at the half. Tariq Bracey isn't done yet on the punt return. Apparently he's going to Notre Dame. He can kind of see why right here. Look at the moves, getting the blocks and directing traffic. He goes in for the score, 34 to 14. But again, this one is not over as well. Here come the Eagles. Cameron Jungers fights Derek Guzman. This one measuring 75 yards for El Centro Southwest as they want to keep their undefeated season going. Guzman a force on defense as well. Mopitas fumbles the handoff. Guzman picks it up and look what he does. 40, 50. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. And he would go all the way, scoop and a score. And Junger's back to pass and he'll go to Grant Hansink with a 342 left on the clock. Southwest is up 41 to 37. The comeback, is it on? Let's see together. Tyree Bracey has one more hurl in him and he finds Tony Falatua. Oh, Fita for the go ahead score, which happens to be the a game winner. One last gasp for El Centro, and that is no good. Milpita State Champions, the final 45 to 41. Oh, they gave efforts like this all year. This is nothing new, and 
And when I was looking at the score, oh, we're only down three touchdowns. You know, I figured, you know, we can we can do it. And we come back with the score, come back with another quick score, and then go go on the lead. You know, I knew that these kids could do it. It's our heart, man. Every week we have a we have big heart, and we even if we're down like 20 points, we'll come back. Well, we just fought really hard. We knew that if we just stuck together, we'd be able to score and just come out and just play our hearts out. It's hard to be sad when we've accomplished so much throughout the whole year, and that's what our coach told us, that we, we wanted to win, obviously, but we knew that we had accomplished so much and that we could hold our heads up high either way. Tim Gahn taking the solo trip to Calexico for the Division 6A. Vincent Memorial taking on Galileo out of San Francisco. Second quarter of the Scots, Eduardo Valenzuela. Uh, he keeps it himself to get Vincent on the board. Five seconds left in the half, and Galileo with the ball. And uh, watch what happens as the ball ends up in the hands on the interception, deflection interception by Juan Pablo Ruiz as the Scots are up 14-8 at the break. Second half, though, all about the Bulldogs. Ronald Fox goes through traffic, finding his way into the end zone. Galileo up 22, but the Scots, without their quarterback, still fighting, getting some points on the kick return. Look at this one. This is uh, Ruiz with the lateral, and that would go to Ivan Avalos. And watch him. A nice little duck, Ivan. He would end up outrunning the special teams and going in for the score, 80 yards. That would make it 38-20. But that's the last score that they see. It's not enough. Galileo, state champions, the final 38-20. Uh, the commitment, the hard work, and come out here and give it all 100%. Uh, not one of them lacks any skill. It's just a question of the heart itself. So that's what we worked on all, all season. I'm proud of them. They've done what they had to come out and do today. Uh, game plan may have changed a little bit, but we stayed in there. And last thing that I know about these kids is that they will succeed in life with what they've accomplished so far in this season. Congrats to all those teams at Grossmont High School, the San Diego Prep Committee, remembering prep writer Bill Ed Dickens. That's right, several East County coaches and athletes gathered at the high school this morning to honor the longtime life of the sports editor reporter, uh, Mr. Dickens. The Elko native uh, passing away in November at the age of 68. Dickens covering sports for nearly 45 years and was co founder of EastCountySports.com. As a lifetime member of the Baseball Writers Association of America, Dickens was known for his baseball inside, along with his lifetime dedication to the coverage of East County athletes. As far as North County and other counties were getting so much coverage and so he had he decided to overemphasize the East County kids just because he for the love of it really. He was also known as relentless for his late night phone calls. <laughs> he would call coaches after midnight if he needed to get the rest of the story. Not apologize, not even identify himself. He just started with so how to go and they knew him. Well, the Division II college championship game taking place in Kansas City between West Florida and Texas A&M Commerce. Why am I showing this, you ask? Well, the Lions featuring Luis Perez from Otay Ranch. He was a quarterback his freshman year and then decided to pick up bowling. Well, it's a good thing that he quit bowling and started to do this because he would, the guy who won the basically Division II Heisman, end up throwing for a two touchdown of passes, and he would also give... Texas A&M Commerce, he went to Southwestern uh, College as well, their first national championship, the final 37-27. to Let's talk about some more locals. Oregon facing Boise State in the Las Vegas Bowl, complete with all the splendors of the strip and 2013 Silver Pigskin winner Royce Freeman. He decided to sit this one out, protecting his NFL draft status. Leaking high alumnus Tyree Robinson putting Oregon back in the ball game, picking this ball off in the red zone, and he'll take it back 100 yards for the score. Yes, Tyree Robinson. But the difference of the game is Brett Rippon to Cedric Wilson. Rippon throwing for 362 and two scores. He also uh, has Wilson on his side who catches 10 for 221 and a score. Boise State wins Las Vegas Bowl the final 38 to 28. Welcome back to the ASR. The USD Torero is trying to continue the best start in school history out of the gates as USD's won eight of their first 10 games. One of her North Texas would make it 9 of 11 as we head to the Slim Gym where the Mean Green of North Texas try to break down one of the best defenses in the nation in the Toreros. First half, the Toreros, Isaiah Panero with a three to tie the uh, game early. As later in the first, it's uh, Tyler Williams with the three and one as Toreros 
go up three right before half, though. The Mean Greens, Roosevelt Smart with three to give North Texas a two-point lead at the break. Second half, and it's Smart again, and he's pretty smart from beyond the three-point line. He hits six of 11. He would score 31 in the game. North Texas uh, beats USD and OT the final 86-83. On the ice, the third annual Teddy Bear Toss at the Valley View Casino Center. More than 1,000 bears making their way to the ice prior to the goals game was stocked in. It takes 13 minutes for the ice to get covered in stuffed animals thanks to this uh, stick of uh, Mitch Holtz. As the goals, though, would break a one-all tie in the third. Three scores, including this one from uh, Corey Trop. as the goals go on to win this one, the final 4-1. to one. Well, believe it or not, that's it for the All Sports Report. But we're not done. Make sure to stay tuned for the KSI News at 11 with David Davis. It's really good. And it's next. <laughs>